for me, singing Bach is uh, really an exercise in, um, in multitasking. The difficulty with Bach is that you have to both sing light and with some kind of clarity and power. There is hardly ever time to breathe and that makes you a little bit um, stuck sometimes. It's just very challenging to make it all work in a real vocal setting. Well, the first, first time I sang Bach, it was immediately singet dem Herrn. And then I thought, mm, okay, that's not very comfortable. And I, di I didn't study singing yet, so it was like, oh my God, what is this? I remember that I found it not easy, not easy. And that has much to do with the fact that in Bach, there is basically never time to breathe. Because Bach doesn't think as a singer, so phrases can be enormously long and there's maybe like an eighth pause in between to breathe. And that's sometimes, uh, thank you, Mr. Bach, but no, uh, <laughs> it's not easy. Bach writes very instrumentally, and that's one of the big challenges of singing Bach. In a piece like Lorbit, uh, but also in arias, he writes in a very instrumental way. Um, and so the biggest technical challenge is to find uh, a way to vocally realize his instrumental conception. So it's going towards uh, instrumental writing, I think, and then it's the choice, of course, uh, how to perform it, which articulation we do. So let's maybe we can try it once if we sing it completely legato and see what happens. Yeah? Everybody, please. Way to continue. We've heard, heard these very legato lines now, and they, all, they make us think of maybe the way that Brahms wrote the same kind of writing, but uh, the lines are much longer and uh, doesn't maybe fit to the, to the style. And let's see what happens if we do a little bit more muscled uh, muscle build up of the notes, yeah? as we normally do it. Now let's go completely instrumental and let's sing it staccato. Lo, ho, ho, ho. Yeah? Yes, thank you. So if you go too instrumental in an articulation, I think it becomes a little bit unnatural. So I think finding the middle in the line with enough core to every note uh, is important. So, of course, at times we have thought about how the 18th century or 17th century singers must have sounded like. And if they sound like us at all, we know that uh, boys were singing his music. We know how the boys' soprano or uh, sound is, that it is more um, straight by nature, I would say. And um, um, of course, that, that sort of stuff we know, but we actually don't really know what the vocal, vocal cords were. The type of singers we're looking for is um, singers that have a certain uh, core in the voice, um, not specially small voices. You have to have uh, a flexibility and some uh, power in the engine. It's better if it's not such a huge voice to start with because uh, it's more, it's just easier to navigate. It's just, uh, you're not going on a highway and you, know, you don't need this, uh, this big car. You just, you need a mountain bike kind of thing so that, that you can go all kinds of places. Uh, lighter voices tend to move more easily quickly and that was also a, an element of Baroque aesthetic. Bassi, for example, talks about uh, how uh, attractive voices are the light voices that can move flexibly. And that's, that's very true in Bach also. But still, 
uh, very important is that, you, that you're able to control your vibrato um, so that you can apply it in the, in the right uh, points. It's very important for a Bach singer to be able to control his vibrato. I agree totally with Bart. Uh, so it's not a thing to be used all the time uh, because it clouds the transparency of, of the phrases that, that Bach writes. If you put too much sauce on it, you know, then it's then the actual stuff doesn't taste like anything anymore. You only taste the sauce. Maybe we can demonstrate it if we sing this passage with immediate vibrato on every note and see what happens. Yeah, so you see now how the harmonies are completely blurred by the fluctuating uh, pitches of, of the, all those singers with their vibratos. Um, let's do it again without and, and, and see what the difference is in the sound. Yeah, this is very clear to me and so, um, yeah, it makes the music shine. I was first so confused by all the notes, like those coloraturas, it's just coloratura, 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 and what do I do with them? Where do I go with them? It's, it's just one big mess, I would say. There are so many different ways to approach coloratura. Um, our house style here in the Bach Reinicking is, I think, quite specific in terms of coloratura. We uh, approach coloratura in terms of groupings, and with uh, quantitative stress. It always comes down to breaking up the line in smaller pieces. Of course, you can sing, Alleluia, Alleluia. Then everything is more or less the same. And if I cut it up, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Then I already made a few cuts. So I do like two by two, Alleluia. And I can make a smaller or a bigger cut, Alleluia. That's four and two. So uh, that kind of articulation, uh, if done consciously, uh, adds a lot to the transparency of the music. I guess the most difficult thing with singing Bach is keeping that energy, that, uh, that focus all the time from the beginning till the end. The biggest technical challenge is stamina, because Bach doesn't give you many spaces where you can stop. It's like an Olympic sport. We have to go further, we train better. All the other singing that we do profits by it, and I thank Bach for that. If you manage to keep it, this activity and expression, then it lives, this music lives. And that's what I'm aiming for. Oh. 